Hi guys, my name is Ansel and I'm going to be um, walking you through the process to add a shop to your Leo website. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is um, open up our website dashboard. So something to note is that you're only going to be able to add a shop to your website if you've already upgraded your website. So if you haven't done that, you're going to want to. Um, E-commerce and booking is available for both Leo Pro and Leo Business, which are 99 cents a month and $3.99 a month. Um, so if you haven't done that, make sure that you do because you won't have access to the shop feature if you haven't upgraded your website. So I have already upgraded my website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here on View Dashboard. And you'll see that I don't have any products listed yet. So um, I'm going to start by clicking this little button here. And then I'm going to put in a product name and a product description. And then right here is where I can upload photos for um, my product. I'm not going to put any in right now because this is just um, you know, a tutorial. I don't want to open up my files. Um, but please note that you need to, if you want to put multiple files in here, you need to do them all at the same time. So if you're going to drag files in there, you want to make sure you highlight everything that you want to add to your product page at the same time and then drag it all together. If you click browse, um, then same thing, it's going to open up um, the menu for you to select files and you'll want to select all of the files at once that you want to put in here. Um, because if you try to upload one and then upload another one after that, it'll just replace it. So there's a box for you to enter how many units you have in stock of an item. So if I've made five of whatever I'm selling, then I can put a five in there. If you put in a zero or if you just leave it blank and don't put anything in there, um, then it implies unlimited stock. So if you're making to order or if it's a digital product or something like that, um, you can just leave it blank or put in a zero. You can also select how many um, units of your item at a time someone can purchase. So if you only want people to be able to order two of your product per person at one time, um, then you can put a two in there. If it doesn't matter and they can order as many as they want, you can uh, enter zero or you can just leave it blank. I like to just leave it blank. I think it looks cleaner. And then right here, you're able to select if you want to do a fixed price item or a flexible price item. Um, flexible price is for if your item is like by donation or something like that, and you want them to be able to choose how much money they're spending. If you have fixed price selected, you'll be able to enter a price for your item right here. And there's also a section that gives you the option to let the user add a tip, which I think is pretty cool. And then you're going to have some delivery options. Um, so if you se select pickup, it unlocks this pay upon pickup item. And then you'll need to enter an address where the user can come and pick up their item. You can also do digital delivery. And once um, a customer purchases your item, you can have it automatically send them the file, the that they're purchasing and you'll do that um, same way you uploaded pictures above you're going to do here so you'll um, drag and drop or click browse and select any items that you want in here. Then you also have the option to add um, PayPal as a delivery method. So if you want to do that you'll need to go to paypal.com slash buttons um, and there's a few um, options here with PayPal that do different things and they have descriptions on all of them. So let's say we want to just do a buy now button. We're going to click on that. And then I'm able to enter an item name and a price. And you can also change the currency here if you need to. I can also enter um, if I want to charge for shipping. So let's say it takes me $5 to ship an item to somebody. And then it also allows you to enter the tax rate. So where Leia's base is point, oh, my bad, 0.0825. So we'll put that in there. And then you also will need to enter an email address 
um, that your payments will be sent to. And this is, you want to use the email address that is attached to your PayPal account. And then after that, and then it's going to give you this code right here. If you press select code and then just copy this text, you can bring it over here into this PayPal box and just press submit and you are good to go and your button will show up there. Um, some benefits to using PayPal are that um, PayPal handles all of the payment security. They take full responsibility for all of the um, securing of card information. Um, it's also, if you're within the United States, it's a very common um, method of payment that people are comfortable with and familiar with. So um, there are some benefits to adding a PayPal button. Um, oops, my bad. Um, it is important to note that PayPal does take a percentage of your um, profit off of an item. It's super industry standard. You're not going to find um, any sort of payment processing third party um, option that doesn't. So I would just um, visit the PayPal website and read up on that a little bit. I'm going to turn digital off so I don't have to put a file in. And then you can also add a custom message if you would like users to receive um, any sort of message after they purchase your product. So we'll put that in there. And then I'm going to press create product. Oh, it's actually going to make me choose a picture. So we'll do this. Great. I wasn't um, paying attention, obviously, so I missed a couple of boxes, but it'll tell you exactly what you're missing if you're missing something. So now I have this product here. Um, so I do have the option to edit this, and I can it'll bring up this screen again, and I can change things in here. I can also duplicate it. So if I want to put in a product that's very similar but a little bit different, um, and I don't want to start completely over with this form, I can duplicate it and then edit the copy. It also gives me the option to delete products. So after you have some products listed, you're going to need to turn your shop function on. And this is really important. Your shop is not going to show up if you don't do this. So you'll need to go to settings and then scroll down to the bottom here and make sure that you have this box that says products on checked. Um, if you don't have this on, then your shop will not show up on your website. People will not be able to see it. Um, so now that we're on this page, there's something else that's really important in the settings here, and that's your uh, payment settings. So you do have two options for how you would like to um, process payments for your shop. Leia is compatible with both Rave and Stripe. There's a little bit of difference um, between Rave and Stripe. Um, if you're within the United States and you anticipate only selling to other people within the United States and taking credit cards as your method of payment, then Stripe is probably better for you. If you're outside of the United States and um, you plan on making a lot of um, international sales, so selling to people outside of your country, um, or if you anticipate needing to accept payment methods other than credit cards, um, then I would go with Rave. You can certainly look up both of those um, companies online and read more about them on their websites. They both have lots of resources on their websites. Um, make sure when you look at Rave, you're looking at Flutterwave by Rave. Um, they just, they moved their website over, rave.flutterwave.com. Um, they moved their website over, so you're going to want to make sure you have the right one. Um, so you'll need to enter your API key, um, no matter if you decide to use Stripe or Rave. So I'm going to kind of show you where to get those once you sign up. So starting with Stripe, you'll press the Start Now button here. 
and then you'll create an account with Stripe. They'll walk you through the process. It's really quick and really easy to sign up with Stripe. And then once you get all signed up, it's going to give you access to this dashboard here. And this is what it looks like. So this is just our test dashboard um, so that I can use this to show you guys. In order to get your API key, you're gonna need to press developers right here. And then you're gonna click API keys. And then the secret key right here is what you're gonna want. So you're gonna press reveal test key token and then this code right here is the one that you're going to copy and paste right here. This is going to be your secret key. It, my Safari thinks that this is um, a password, but it's not. Um, so that's where you're going to put the secret key if you're using Stripe. Um, you're also going to have to select a checkout currency. This is just the currency um, that you would like to receive. The payment in um, both Stripe and Rave do have options for your customer to pay in other currencies and it converts. So if you're using Rave, you're going to go to rave.flutterwave.com um, and press this button down here to sign up. and this will walk you through the process of getting a Rave account. It's also very quick and easy. And once you sign up for Rave, it's gonna give you access to this dashboard here. And in order to get your API key, you're gonna to wanna to go down here to settings. So in this menu bar right here, you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way down. And then you're gonna to wanna to click API right here. And this will give you your public key and your secret key. And it literally has a copy key button. So you can just press that and then it's copied. Um, so you're gonna, if you're using Rave, you're gonna need to put in both the secret and public keys. And those are both here for you. And then just make sure that you um, select whether you want Rave or Stripe within the latest settings. So, after, let's say I just put in all this information for the first time and I click save settings. I'm not going to click it because I accidentally deleted my API key and I don't want it to save that, but you'll press save settings. And then there's one more really important thing um, to look at. So I'm going to exit my dashboard and I'm going to go to the website where I put in the shop and I'm going to click edit website. And I'm going to want to make sure that this shop button um, has appeared on my website. When you turn your shop on, when you turn products on, this should pop up. But if it doesn't, you're going to want to add it because your customers will not have access to your shop if there is not a button that takes them there. So we're going to do that by clicking redesign site and then make adjustments. And if uh, it's been a while since you've opened the settings, it might give you a little bit of an explanation here. Just press OK. And then right here, there's a selection that says has shopping feature. If I click no and apply this, my shop feature is going to disappear there and then my customers won't be able to get to my shop. So again, redesign, make adjustments, and we want to make sure that this is on right here. I'm going to press apply. And then I just want to double check and make sure that um, my shop is up and running. So I'm going to press view live site and I'm going to press shop. And there it is, there is my item that I put in store. If I put more than one um, picture in, then I could scroll through them with this, but I didn't. Um, all of your products will be listed in this menu right here. And yeah, here's my PayPal button. I can press buy now and I can log into my PayPal account and um, I can pay for it. Here's the total with um, the ridiculously high price that I put on the item plus tax and your shop should be fully set up. If you 
find that you're having any kind of um, problem, you're free to contact Play a Customer Service for help and we're happy to walk you through it, but I hope that this was pretty thorough and helpful. And thanks for watching.